Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 162. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to hit like, follow, or subscribe on the platform that you're listening to us on. You can also check out my work at the loudest.com on the planet, knac.com, for exclusive hard rock and heavy metal interviews, live show coverage, and more. My guests for this episode are bassist Nick Hogg and drummer Alex Cooper of the UK-based melodic rock act, Nitrate. Nitrate's latest album, Feel the Heat, came out on October 13th through Frontiers Music. Now, for the last year or so, this album has been getting a lot of hype on social media, and sometimes when you see this, you're like... You know, yeah, it could be that good, or you end up being disappointed. But I got to tell you, all the hype behind Feel the Heat is well-deserved. It is a fantastic melodic rock AOR album, possibly the best album of 2023 of what I've heard this year. So here's Nick Hogg and Alex Cooper to tell you more about it. Nick, if I knew absolutely nothing about Nitrate, how would you describe the band's music to me? 80s influence, AOR, melodic rock, a little bit of hard rock occasionally. Very influenced on movies, um, 80s TV programs. Yeah, I'd say that sums it up. (laughs) I'd say that's pretty accurate too as a listener. Uh, Nitrate got its start around 2015. Uh, I know you've had some lineup changes over the years. How did the current lineup come together? Well, I teamed up with Tom and James on the Renegade album, um, and you'll see a shift between albums one and two, uh, where I worked a lot with Rob Wilde. Um, If you look at Renegade and this one, it's got a lot more AOR, more melodic. Um, So... We wrote that album together back in 2020, uh, released in 2021. Alex started doing a lot of the media for me. Um, We actually met on a a Zoom call over lockdown um, where we had a few musicians on there having a good chat. Uh, Paul Lane was actually on there as well, wasn't he, Alex? Yeah, I think you'll have to yeah. just to differentiate. I think you'll have to have to like when you say Alex C and Alex S. So, oh, like, yeah, Alex Strandell, obviously, yeah. the singer, and then you've got me as the drummer. But yeah, so Nick's talking about me. Yeah, we actually met on a um, uh, like a it was during COVID, and what a lot of the musicians had decided to do was like have a pub night but on Zoom, so we'd all get a drink, we'd sit down. And then we'd chat about the music industry. And we were on this pub call and there was a, quite a few names in there, weren't there? Like people who'd just joined and like, been given the link to join in. And we were all just sat there basically doing what we're doing now and talking about talking about bands and the music industry and different things. And that's really where me and you got talking. Um, but we'd been friends on Facebook for a long time and you'd kind of seen what I was doing, I think. Yeah, definitely. In media stuff and artwork and... Um, yes so you took over the all the media side of things didn't you and then you joined as full-time drummer mm. um so we had tom and james and yourself rich um got on board probably the back end back end of um renegade mm. and alexander strandell got on board for renegade so it feels more of a settled lineup now. And you're soon to be releasing your fourth studio album, Feel the Heat. It comes out October 13th through Frontiers Music. Uh, when it comes to Nitrate Music, is this a collaborative band effort or does Alex handle lyrics and everyone else handles the music? Um, it's more uh, Tom and James and myself handling the uh the writing side of things. I normally send over rough acoustic ideas to them and they demo up backing tracks and work on my ideas. Um, They've also, with this one, brought a few of the songs to the table themselves. 
Um, there was also a couple of co-writes I did with Rob Wild. Um, and there's also a co-write from Bob Mitchell on this one. Um, and that was a track that Tom and James had um, collaborated with a few years ago um, that was never used for a band that they were in called Vega. And um, we were drinking at a pub one night and he played me the track and I said, I want that one. So um, there, there's there's a mixture on there. I, I think which makes it this different is Nick's such a big music fan. He's like... The beat, like, and this is why I think you get such a collaborative effort with Nitrate is because he's such a fan of different musicians and different and different things. So he'll go like, "Oh, what songs have you got lying around?" <laughs> and they'll be like, "Oh, I've got this one or this one or that one." And he'll be like, "Yeah, can I hear those?" You know, like, and then if he, I think if he feels that it can be pulled into the Nitrate kind of um, world, I guess you know the Nitrate kind of vision that he's got for it he then gets to work on it and he's brilliant at doing that so i think yeah like he kind of pulls it all together does nick and uh makes it all work and tom and james uh they have a production company as well and uh, called martin brothers productions they've been kind of previewing this album i'd say probably for the last six to eight months uh going a long way yeah like it's quite funny i was getting demos being sent across to me because nick was sending me demos across and I was going, oh, these demos sound fantastic. Who's doing this? And he's like, oh, it's Tom and James. Like, you need to sign up to their Facebook page. They've been doing, they've been putting like, you know, like snippets of the way they're doing this and all the rest of it. And the beauty with that is we've had so many people like going, the hype has just continued to build and build because of these little snippets they've been putting on the Facebook page, which is really a bit of ingenious, really, because you're getting to see the record being made, but not quite enough to be all given away, but just enough to see to get a hook to go oh my god that sounds really good and they also telling you what might go in or what might not go in or what they're working on and it was ingenious really 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 clever from the two guys to do that because you kind of get this kind of you know behind this the making of the album before you've had the album which was really nice nick yeah. you mentioned uh one of the co-writes with rob wild from midnight city he was an early member of nitrate correct not a member as such is helped me out from day one so um, he's he's got his own band and he's very much in his own band or bands. and But he, he started it off really as helping me uh, put the backing tracks together and, you know, helping the record process. So, um, you know, I'm good friends with Rob and, you know, we still write songs together and um, there's there's quite a few from that era as well. Um, you know, there may be one or two that we use on a future album that that perhaps on this one, that that slot was covered by a certain track. You know, there might be a, another track that was very similar to one on this track that we use on another album. So he's, he's been on board with the process since day one, really. You guys have released a few singles from the album ahead of time. Uh, All the Right Moves. Wild in the City, uh, two fantastic, catchy, hooky tracks. Uh, Nick, if you want to talk a little bit about the lyric, lyrical inspiration behind All the Right Moves. It's probably one of my favourite tracks on the album. Um, we had a, a really successful track on the last album, Renegade, called um, Big City Lights. Um, and that's the one that brought in a whole new sort of fan base. I think it crossed over a little bit into the synth, synth wave sort of world. Um, and when we when I sat down and was going, started writing songs for this album, I wanted something that would fill that space. So it, it's a little bit of a continuation from that track in a way. Very similar. Um, a lot of nostalgia comes into mind you know i was sat there looking at the dvd collection and i saw the title of the uh, famous tom cruise film uh it's sat behind me at the moment and um the song just wrote itself um sent it over to tom and james and just said look 
that's the template for the next Big City Lights song, you know, Work Your Magic. Um, and then they, they sort of took that approach and, and made it similar in a way. And Alex, you're responsible for turning that song into a music video, which I believe just reached 100,000 views on YouTube. So what was what was the way that you approached this video? I'm going to be I'm going to be dead honest. The All The Right Moves video was the hardest video to get right, because out of the three, we've done three videos of which Wild in the City, um, All The Right Moves. And then we, there's a video for Feel The Heat, which is coming out on the 13th of October. And for Feel The Heat, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to basically try and bring the album cover into a music video. So we did a lot of green screen work. We did a lot of sci-fi animation. There was really, and, and, this, and that's a really cool video. Wild in the City event originally was a synthwave video, but the singer didn't like it. So we, we threw that out thingy. And then I made it into this kind of like, again, green screen, because we're not all in the same country. So we shot it all in green screens, uh, one in Sweden, one in, in the UK. And then we basically clubbed them all together. So then I had two videos done, but I needed to do a third video, which was all the right moves. And I needed it to look different, like it hadn't been shot on the same green screens with the same guys in the same day and all the rest of it. And I wanted to get that all the right moves feel, that, that what they'd got in the song, I wanted to get the feel across in a video. And I must have done, what, 10 different edits, 11 different edits, like, and oh, like around about edit four, I was like, I give up. I'm, I'm li I literally I can't figure this out. And then I just started finding a few things and then one thing led to another. And all of a sudden I just went, I'm just going to make this the most American. We're not American, but I'm going to make this the most American video I can because I love that stuff. I just and 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 I'm going to try and poke it back to a time while still retaining a little bit of modern and i want palm trees and i want sun and i want scantily clad girls and and it doesn't really have to have a storyline it just needs to be cool right so that was what we went for and hopefully we achieved that but you know like you can never tell with the youtube comments <laughs> well i'm glad that you said that the third song is going to be feel the heat because i i love that song fantastic really sets the tone for the for the rest of the album yeah yeah no um feel the heat it's got a great video as well i really that's my that's my favorite i know nick's favorite is all the right moves but feel the heat's mine you got a great ballad on there uh one kiss to save my heart featuring isa which is uh james martin's wife so obviously uh it wasn't too hard for you guys to get her on the album she's been a big part of nitrate uh because from the renegade days she was singing uh, most of the demos. So the first time you hear a song, a Nitrate song, it's been with Issa singing it. And she's just got such an amazing voice, such a range. And when we were trying to find or thinking of who was going to sing the songs for Renegade, it was so hard to think, right, well, what male vocalist can match that? Which can, who's got the range up there? that sounds that sort of pure voice as well, but can deliver a rock tone. So, you know, we we had hunted uh, Alex to um, do the vocal. And because it was lockdown as well, and it didn't have a lot of work on at the time, you know, that gave us the edge to sort of get him on board. Um, but she, so she does the, um, she sings all the demos, but, she uh, sings the backing vocals on a lot of the songs on this album as well. Tom and James produced the album. Uh, your prior albums were produced by uh, Pete Newdeck and and mixed by Harry Hess of uh, Harem Scarum. Uh, is the switch over to the Martin Brothers also marks the change in your sound, I believe you mentioned briefly before. And what was your sound, would you say, prior? A little heavier, less keyboards. Yeah, but I mean, it's a weird one because I think album one is, there's a, a little bit of everything in there. Album two, open wide, it was a straight up hair metal album. Um, and then Renegade and Feel the Heat, they are very much in the AOR sound. And I'm a massive fan of 
keyboards. And um, until we had James and Tom on board, we never had that keyboard sound. Um, not not the way that Tom and James do the keys. Um, and I think there's a lot of space in the songs still as well uh, because of the, the way that they build the songs up. Um, so, yeah, it's a different style. It's actually Tom James's first ever proper mix. Um, you know, it's something they learnt over lockdown. You know, the difference being, though, that the demos that they were delivering were top notch beforehand so it wasn't like it was you know a massive step up for them but it's the first one that they've got the name on as you know martin brothers production and i think they've done a fantastic job on that alex you're responsible for designing the album cover for this album um thinking this is 80s movies inspiration as well yeah yeah I mean, we get uh, we get asked about the 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 Blade Runner covers is what we get asked about, and um, and yeah, they're they're, inspi- they're inspired by all of that. You know, we're we're both me and Nick are both big sci fi eighties sci fi fans, and you know, I'm a big I'm a big uh, Trekkie and Star Wars fan, and you know, every, we're just big geeks, and I think you know the music sits in a like sits you know, really kind of sits for us for all the stuff that we loved when we were kids and now we're grown ups and we can do it and make it, you know, and that's it. So like, and I think it's just, we marry those two, the music and those, that imagery very, very well. So we end up like, yeah, I mean, I ended up kind of getting headhunted by Nick on that, that respect and drafted in because he'd seen some of the stuff I'd done on my Facebook and went, yeah, I think he'd fit. And I think it's taken us, hasn't taken us long, but we have had many, many conversations about the branding and where we wanted it to get to and how we wanted it to look and how professional and keeping a brand identity. And, you know, we're already working on the next one, you know, what the next front cover is going to look like and what, you know, and keeping it in a certain style so that we we retain the nitrate about it now that we, we're kind of sitting on a really nice plateau of where we, we know what it should be and what it should sound and look like, you know, and I think that's what this album's done for us. So, but yeah, yeah, I did the cover. Um, I didn't do the last one. I didn't do Renegade. That was done by another guy, but he kind of gave us, Nello's really good. And he, he gave us like a kind of founding basis of where we were going to evolve it from. And you've parlayed this album cover into variants that appear on poster prints and t-shirts, correct? Yeah. So we do it again. It's like keeping the, you know, keeping the feel, the heat kind of branding on this one across all of the merchandise and across all of the, the posters and stuff like that. And basically, yeah, the poster was the fact that I went to Nick, I went, I I, I think we've done, I think we've done all right with the album cover. I really want to make a movie poster out of it. And Nick was like, I just love that idea. Let's do that. And yeah, we're actually Nick. Yeah. I'm probably just going to blurt this out. We're trying to make, like movie figures of it now and all the rest of it like so you've got like star wars type figures that will go in with the uh with the with the with the merchandise because we just love all that stuff so we're gonna just try and make them <laughs> see what happens we like we may fail miserably but yeah we they they look really cool but yeah we can the more we can do the more fun we can make it the more fun we can make it as a band not just for us but for everybody else i think that's that's part of having a good artwork side of things. I think a lot of bands um, don't really indulge themselves on that part of it. I think as well, the um, that movie poster has been on the Spotify as our, you know, cover when you look at the Nitrate page. I've had no end of fans, uh, well, new fans, come to me and say, well, I saw the poster, I thought this is up my street, clicked on it, and I love it. So... You know, there's there's a certain thing that with those posters and the branding that attracts a certain person to it, and they normally like what they hear. So we've, we've sort of got the branding sorted, I think. <laughs> until yeah. the next one. <laughs> well, until the next one, yeah. Feel the Heat is your first album for the Frontiers label. How did you end up signing with them, Nick? Um, Renegades was mastered by 
Alessandra Del Vecchio, who also did the backing vocals for that album. So we knew him quite well. Is a great bloke, and um, Tom and James obviously know know him because through through Vega, and they were on Frontiers, um, and I think he um, sort of took over the AOR side of things for you know recruiting AOR bands. Um, so um, we we just got in touch and said, "Are you interested?" They came back and said yes, and we did the deal. Um, obviously, it's a it's a big label. Uh, it's going to attract uh, a bigger audience for the band to grow. Are there any discussions of bringing your back catalog to Frontiers? I know you used to be on AOR Haven, and they're no longer in existence. Yeah, no. Um, we took back control of the other three albums. Um, it, it's something that wouldn't make financial sense for Frontiers, because obviously the album's been brought out, but also for us as well. Um, because again, if you do a deal, unless there's some you know financial incentive, it's not worth handing back your albums to a label. So they're all in hand now. We've just reprinted copies of Renegade. We are currently working on um, a reissue of Open Wide, where we're going to do some bonus tracks for it brand new bonus tracks um, and at some point we will do a reissue of, of um, real world as well so it, it all takes time it all takes money and eventually they'll be all back on sale you feel the heat does well with frontiers could we see that this particular album on vinyl so the deal was that it was supposed to be on vinyl um and i'd agreed to buy a certain amount off the label um then we found out it was going to be a double vinyl which pulled the cost up a little bit but that was fine then i found out that the postage was going to be nearly 500 pound uh to get the vinyl delivered but then unfortunately since brexit we now have a tax to pay um anything that comes yeah anything that comes into the country what I didn't realise at the time was that was going to be £1,600 extra. So, yeah. So, unfortunately, with the amount that it agreed, I would have had to sell the vinyl for more than the label was just to break even. And the, the figures didn't stack up, unfortunately. Um, and we really wanted a vinyl. Like, like, can we just put this out there? Yeah, like, yeah. like, us in the band... Are, are gutted we're not getting a vinyl like <laughs> always but yeah. you know we'd have got like 150 or something like that like nick 150 copies of vinyl for like two grand we'd have had to shell out just to get them here because they'd be printed in europe and we could have printed 300 here for the same money but just print them here but then frontiers don't do that because they have to do it with their guys so that's all it it's, is. It's, it's it's actually a lot worse worse than you've just said because it's it's not it's a lot more um because i'd be buying them i'd be buying them off frontiers at more than i can manufacture them for here then there's the postage but then there's the tax which is an extra nearly you know yeah. 1600 pound on top and the figures just don't add up uh, the renegade album uh, which I got printed. I got printed for, uh, I think it was £4.50 a unit. Um, fa fantastic sort of deal back in 2021. Um, you're talking probably triple that, triple that now. Yeah, for Brexit. Um, yeah. So, so the answer is never say never. I mean, if I can find the money, if I can make it work. We are trying to figure it out. We are having yeah. those conversations because, like I say, in the band, we all want it. <laughs> like, and we've had a lot of inquiries for it, but and we want it. So we are trying to figure it out. There has been talk of shipping it to somewhere else and then having a day trip. Expected. Yeah, but we'll just see. We, we just got to figure it out. Is Nitrate uh, going to remain a studio project or do you have aspirations to take it out on the road? 
we're currently talking. We've we've spoke to uh, um, Alex, the singer, about it, and he's willing. It's just getting the right festival, the right promoter to shell out the right amount of money to just cover our costs. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but we want to. We're all keen to get out there and and do some gigs. Uh, Alexander Strandell has his hands in a few projects between Art Nation and Crown and Nitrate. So I, I would think there'd be some logistical issues as well as trying to plan a live show as he tries to plan something with those other bands as well. Yeah, you, you've got to add into the mix that you've got to fly over a singer or fly over the band. Or you've got to fly both to wherever the gig is. So if the gig's in, you know somewhere else we've all got to fly so this is the yeah this is the problem really but again we're all we all want that to happen so we're all trying our best to find a solution that just fits everybody and doesn't leave anybody out of pocket uh alex do you play in in any other bands besides nitrate i know a lot of people on the frontiers label play in other bands and a lot of people in general do yeah so i have my own my own band um, called Devil Fire, which I'm the lead singer in. Uh, Devil Fire was, uh, on, the first release was on AOR Heaven before it was, which now it, I think it's Pride and Joy, now it is. Um, uh, we were, yeah, we were released on that with the first album. The second album we released during COVID, which was pretty much a self-release, um, just because there was no point in releasing it through a label. If you can, If you can do it yourself, we'll do it ourselves. Um, and we're currently in talks on a third album. We'll see what happens with that. But at the moment, I'm kind of in between albums with that one because I'm doing all the nitrate stuff. <laughs> and I'm on, I'm on, I'm, I've got my nitrate t-shirt on at the moment, and I'm doing all uh, the campaign stuff for them, and yeah, just figuring all that out. But yeah, but Devil Fire's, you know, Devil Fire's been good. We've had a good, good reception from the US, good reception from Europe. You know, it's. Um, it's a little it's not like nitrate uh, it's it's a bit more uh i always joke that if nitrate was Def leopard we'd be guns and roses okay yeah so it's that kind of just different so but that's all it is but um but yeah so yeah i'm just uh at the moment I'm, i've got my nitrate cap fully on all right nick anything else besides nitrate no the one's enough for me this is the only band um sort of you know it, it takes up all my time you it's know your baby, I, 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 it's, your, it's your baby yeah yeah i wake up thinking nitrate go to bed thinking nitrate so um coming up with ideas and things like that well those are all the questions i have for you guys today the new nitrate album comes out october 13th feel the heat frontiers music and i don't throw this term around lightly possibly album of the year fantastic from beginning to end i love that aor heavily produced stuff and keep it coming man oh, i love that. album of the year did you hear that nick i'm gonna quote yeah we, we're <laughs> quoting you george you, you <laughs> good because i can't think of anybody else right now and we're in october i can't think of anybody else right now that would be <laughs> so unless someone's coming in late you got you got the top spot right now. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks Thank you very much. Thank That's you. Brilliant. Thanks for taking the time to join me on the podcast and filling me in uh, on nitrate and everything that you guys are about. And I hope to see you again in the future. Once again, I want to thank Nick Hogg and Alex Cooper of Nitrate for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out their latest album, Feel the Heat, out now on Frontiers Music. Head over to your favorite music streaming app. Take a listen to the album. If you like what you hear, buy a physical copy. Support the artist. For all things Nitrate, head over to their official Facebook page slash Nitrate Official. I also want to thank Dustin Hardman of Hardman Promotions and Frontiers Music for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. Discover your next favorite artist on the Rock is George podcast.